it soon becomes clear that having less work is easy. It's filling the void with more life that is hard. Finding excitement, as it turns out, takes more thought than simple workaholism. But don't fret, that's where all the rewards are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I am so happy to have you here with me today. Today, I will be sharing a pretty big life update that will also impact you, the listener. So thank you for being here and spending this time with me. I truly enjoy every moment that we get to spend together, even though I obviously record these in advance. You listen to them after the fact. I truly feel like I can feel your energy as I record this right now as I'm sitting talking to a camera and speaking into a microphone. I'm pretending like all of you are sitting in this room with me because in a certain sense, you really are. A while back, I had actually heard from this longtime podcaster. He was asked a question of, you know, in the beginning of a podcast or a YouTube channel or any type of content creation or even business when you look at the numbers and it seems like not many people are listening or watching or hearing your message how do you get past that and I will never forget his answer he said even if let's say you get 15 views on a YouTube channel I'll just use that as an example imagine that those 15 people are real people sitting in a classroom with you and you're speaking directly to them. Even though 15 might not seem like a lot when you see other YouTubers that have 200,000 views, 15 people, those are still 15 real people that are hearing you and seeing you and are feeling whatever you're putting out into the world. So I think of that every single time I sit down to record that even on the weeks when it looks like the numbers aren't as high as I would hope or dream, I know that you listening are still a real person listening. You hear me and therefore we have this connection. We are connected in some way in this magical universe. So anyway, I didn't expect to have that as part of this intro, but Thank you for being here, truly, from the bottom of my heart. It means far more than you could ever know. So before we get into today's big announcements and life updates and all of the exciting stuff, of course, if you are a longtime listener, you will know it's time to breathe. The breath work that I want us to do today is my all-time favorite. I feel like I say that every time I lead breath work, but... But I really mean that for this technique. (laughs) So I hope I've been clear about that in the past. This technique is bee's breath or Brahmari. I actually just taught this in a workshop a few days ago to a group of high school students. And even though it was a full hour workshop and I shared so much information and education and so many different techniques, every single one said that this humming practice was their favorite because it's so easy and honestly it's kind of fun who doesn't like to hum sing chant make noise we live in a world where it's kind of weird to make noise so it feels good to do so 
Anyway, back to the breath work. The way that we do bees breath or Brahmari, if you're new here, is that we're just going to breathe in through the nose and then seal the lips and hum out your full exhale like this. Mm -hmm. Love that. So you're going to extend the exhale as long as you possibly can because that alone is going to calm your nervous system by stimulating your vagus nerve. So anytime you are nervous or stressed or simply a little overwhelmed, jittery, anxious, just elongate your exhale and then you get bonus points if you can also hum, make some sound. So let's go ahead and just do three of these breaths today. So if you'd like to close your eyes, you can do so now. And just maybe placing your palms on your thighs if you're sitting down. Empty out from your previous breath here. And go ahead, breathe in for the first inhale. Seal your lips and hum out as long as you can. Round two, inhale through the nose and hum it out. And last one, the longest, fullest yet. Inhale through the nose and long hum it out. Oh, nice. Breathe in through the nose. Open mouth. Let this one go. <sighs> mm, gorgeous. You can flutter open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. Oh my goodness. I just opened my eyes and I swear the world is just a little bit brighter. There's more sun shining in through these windows. Life feels a little bit easier now. It's amazing what three breaths can do. I now really understand why the high school students loved it so much. And obviously, as I said, even before I led that, this is my favorite as well. So I hope that you actually practice these techniques in your own life. Even if you're just practicing it, practicing it one time a week as you listen to these episodes, that's amazing. But the more you practice, the more you expand your lung capacity and which will not only extend the quantity of your life, but it will vastly improve the quality of your life. So anyway, that's my little breathwork rant for the day. Let's get into a couple life updates. What's going on? What are my announcements? What announcement is going to impact you? Let's get into it. So the first is what have I been up to recently? Well, I have been in the Midwest visiting family for about five weeks at this point. If you are a religious listener of It's All Magic, you will know that a few weeks ago I had recorded an episode saying that Cal and I had officially moved out of California. So we put all of our belongings into a storage unit and then we came over here to the Midwest where we have been staying with family for truly five weeks. So it's been a whirlwind and it honestly feels like this time has flown by. I think it's just been so nice having this uninterrupted extended period of time with our families and knowing that we're about to embark on a huge adventure on the other side of the globe. It just makes every moment feel that much more special and precious. So I have been really enjoying my time doing that, but also what is so wild, and I got to say, if you haven't yet listened to my astrocartography episode that I had with Helena Woods back, I mean, a couple months, I want to say it was episode 20, definitely listen to that because I feel like astrocartography is so real. I feel it in my life 
I mean, palpably right now. And I'll tell you why. So in California, where I was living, I live pretty close to a Saturn line. So quick reminder, if you don't remember what astrocartography is from that episode, or if you haven't listened to it yet, astrocartography is essentially the practice of mapping the planetary orbits and movements onto like a map of the globe at the moment of your birth. So rather than just saying, oh, your Venus is in Virgo, your Mars is in Scorpio, you can actually see where all of the planets were moving over the earth at the moment of your birth. And each of those planetary lines, just when you look at a map of the world, each of those lines not only hold a certain energy for you as an individual based on your chart and all of that, but it actually activates different parts of your birth chart. It makes different parts of your personality come alive. Different characteristics that may have been laying dormant actually come to the surface and they're they're given a bit of a pep in their step, if you will. And so for me, living on my Saturn line, Saturn is the planet of discipline, of rules, of hard work, of responsibility. And that's not necessarily a negative. For people that don't have Saturn prominent in their chart, they can tend towards laziness or just not putting the work in. For me, however, I have a very prominent Saturn. It's almost like Saturn rules me. And as a result, I'm extremely disciplined. I always put the work in. But also what's interesting, when you live on a Saturn line, depending on what Saturn looks like in your individual birth chart, Things can happen very slowly. Saturn tends to just slow down processes. It slows down your rate of success. It kind of just makes things feel hard and slow. And I have experienced that in California for so long where it's constantly felt like no matter how much effort I put in, the opportunities don't rise or the success doesn't necessarily follow. It feels like I'm constantly shouting into a void. And then five weeks ago, I landed here and I kid you not, in the first maybe week and a half of me being here, four different opportunities arose like that. I just snapped. I don't know if you could even hear that. It was a bad snap. It was with my left hand. (laughs) But so many things happened the second I moved locations, which also I have to say makes me so excited because Cal and I have actually chosen our next international stop, which I'll be talking about shortly, based on the astrocartography reading that we got with Helena Woods last year. And she had said that this particular country just has incredible planetary energy for both Cal and I. So I'm really looking forward to that now that I'm experiencing it on a perhaps a smaller scale. But the four opportunities that arose have been so exciting. So I had two different speaking engagements and I have been on two podcasts other than my own, of course. I've been of course, podcasting on It's All Magic as well. So the first speaking engagement was so cool because I was actually speaking with my mom at this huge social workers conference in Charleston, West Virginia. And my mom spoke about the topic of courageous conversations, crucial conversations, how to have the kinds of really difficult, probably stressful conversations that we all need to be having more of both at home and at work. The conversations where you're asking your boss for a raise, the conversations where you're telling your partner that something they've said to you has really bothered you and you want to work towards some sort of compromise or a difference in communication. So those kinds of courageous conversations, and I got to say, social workers have to have those really difficult conversations with clients all the time. So my mom was speaking on that, but she thought that it would be really nice to teach them yet another technique alongside that, that technique being breath work. And so I came in and I spoke alongside her. She kind of did her part and then I did my part and I taught them some inspirational stuff about breath work and then I guided them through a couple different breathing techniques and it was just such a fun experience to be up on stage with my mom in front of all of those people that's just 
I mean, a sacred moment I will hold in my heart forever. So that was the first speaking engagement. The second was one that I just mentioned, which is that I spoke at a high school last week and I delivered this hour workshop. I have actually the signature hour long breathwork workshop that I've delivered so many times. I've done it multiple times for, I mean, corporate companies. I did it where I used to work when I had my tech job a couple times. I've also delivered it for venture capitalists in Oakland, California, and the Silicon Valley. I did that last fall. So I have delivered this workshop so many times, and I do it again and again and again because people love it, and I love delivering it. It is equal parts inspirational, educational, interactive. People walk around with or walk away with so many tips, tricks, and just motivation, inspiration to live a fuller life. So I loved delivering it for the high school kids. I got to say it was my kind of my first time working with kids and I forgot about the giggles (laughs) that ensue when you have them breathe or meditate. But even with the giggles, they got so much out of it and some of the teachers let me know after my workshop when they all went back to class that the students were so excited to talk about what they had learned. So anyway, those two speaking engagements and then I've also been on two podcast episodes that are so exciting. One is on the Wounded Healers podcast run by these two amazing women who both have rheumatoid arthritis and so they often speak to I mean other young women who are struggling with sometimes debilitating chronic illness just how to live a healthy happy fulfilling life even with chronic illness and what that looks like. So they bring in a lot of different kind of wellness, spiritual people. And we mainly talked about astrology, breath work, and also just the spiritual art of surrender. So I got very kind of raw, vulnerable about different stories in my life on that episode. And I really enjoyed the conversation. So maybe I'll link that in the show notes below. And then the other podcast is the Conversations with the Planets podcast with two other astrologers. And we talk about the essentially self-care meeting astrology and how your unique birth chart can actually tell you how to best take care of yourself and when you feel like you're out of alignment, how to get back on the right path. So both of these have been really amazing conversations and I'm just happy that I get to spread these messages in on other platforms as well so that those who haven't yet found It's All Magic can still hopefully find their way to these messages. So that's kind of what I've been up to. So it's just been a whirlwind of astrocartography actually working. It's been so much fun spending time with family. I've really enjoyed these speaking engagements and podcasts. And on that note, I'll also say if you would ever like me to speak either at your company or a private workshop or anything like that, please, please reach out to me. I absolutely love speaking. I mean, motivational speaking, delivering wellness workshops. I've done manifestation workshops, breath work, like you name it. I've done a lot of speaking and I enjoy every single moment of it. So you can reach out to me either email. You can find me just at devin.rochelle7 at gmail.com or it's all magic podcast at gmail.com or just message me on Instagram. I mean, wherever you can find me, I would love to speak and um, and deliver some magic for you if that feels like it's in alignment. So that is kind of what I've been up to. Next is what is coming up and what will impact you as a listener. So we'll start with what is coming up. Well, in less than a week, Cal and I are going to board a one-way flight to Chiang Mai, Thailand. 
(laughs) So I've talked about going to Thailand before on the podcast, but that's what I was also alluding to in this little astrocartography conversation that Thailand is apparently going to have all of the best planetary energy in the world for both Cal and I based on our unique individual birth charts. So I'm just really excited to watch the magic continue to blossom, bloom, and unfold before my eyes. But with that said, I wanted to just kind of talk about the emotions that are coming up when it comes to boarding a one-way flight to an international country with no further plans. And I would say I mainly feel so excited, although it doesn't feel real. Cal and I have been talking about this for so long that it kind of just feels like like a thing we talk about but don't do (laughs) is kind of what I'm getting at. But other than that, I mean, so excited. Also, of course, I have moments of fear, like, oh my gosh, we are giving up all of these comforts we have in the U.S. We are giving up everything that we know. We are giving up proximity to friends and family Just everything we've grown up in that we're quite comfortable in, we are throwing that to the wayside for the sake of adventure. And more than adventure, and something I really want to share here, is for the sake of personal growth. I mean, obviously you've heard, what is it, like growth happens the second you're outside of your comfort zone. That's not the exact quote, but you know what I'm trying to say. And I've always felt that when I travel when I get back from some sort of trip or even if it's a longer term trip I feel myself up leveling every single day at least that's how it feels I went on this life changing trip to Australia and New Zealand back in college in 2017 it was organized by my university Ohio State it was actually this leadership trip and it was so life-changing in so many ways that I still remember when I got back from that trip, a few friends that I had met on the trip, they had discussed with me that we should challenge ourselves in the ways that we had on the trip at home. And one of those things, this is maybe going to sound silly to some of you, but one of those things was I wanted to challenge myself to not wear makeup every day because I grew up in a very makeup happy household where we really love fashion and getting dressed up and looking good and feeling good and there's nothing wrong with that. But I also had gotten to a point where I wore makeup all the time because I just didn't feel that beautiful without it. It just kind of became what I did. And on this trip, because it was largely an outdoors trip where we were doing things like whitewater rafting, I went skydiving, hiking, mountain biking. Like we did all of the outdoorsy things and we were learning about leadership. It was amazing. But because it was so outdoorsy, we, none of us even brought makeup on the trip. And by the end, we felt so healthy and alive and free and just beautiful in our own skin and so I came home and ever since that trip I would say I actually don't wear makeup more than I wear makeup now if I wake up on a certain day and I feel like I want to wear makeup I absolutely do and I love wearing makeup it makes me feel glamorous but if I wake up on a day and I feel like ah I don't want to wear makeup today. I don't. And I don't feel any different. And so that's just one example. But truly, every single time I have gone somewhere international where I'm immersed in a different culture, different cuisine, different language, different lifestyle, I grow so much as a person. And I know that everyone has different ways of growing. And for many people, it's travel. For many, it's not. But... Travel is just a big part of my path. And even after, I mean, a long time of studying my personal astrological birth chart, travel is a big part of my life. It's not me just saying, oh, I love to travel. I'm going to travel. I mean, it is truly like my soul's promise. When I came into this body, when I came into this lifetime, I knew that 
being immersed in international lands would be a big part of not only my soul's joy and my soul's path, but actually my career. So that's very clearly outlined in my chart, which I just think is magical. So anyway, that's kind of a little bit about what we have going on with Thailand, about to board this one-way flight. I mean, right now, as I'm recording, we don't even have accommodations booked, which is a little wild. Um, We're about to do that very shortly. We've just been very busy, as you can tell from all of these plans. But other than hopefully getting accommodations in the next couple of days, we don't have anything planned. And that is what I find so beautiful and freeing that we can get there and we can play it by ear. If we end up meeting a couple who says, hey, we actually are about to lead a retreat in Vietnam. Uh, We would love for you to teach breath work or... Um, host astrology workshops, you know, any chance you could come. The fact that I could say yes and just board a flight to Vietnam, I mean, mind-blowing. Like, how amazing is that? So anyway, I'm excited. I am, of course, a little nervous. I am thrilled. I am proactively already missing the comforts of home and American culture and American accents and English as a language. (laughs) But other than that, oh, I think it's so worth it for the sake of adventure and mostly for the sake of personal growth and joy and just experiencing life outside of one's comfort zone. So I'm so excited to keep you guys updated throughout the journey. And I also want to make a quick movie recommendation, a movie that Cal and I recently watched for his first time and for my second time that will get you in the mood to just experience international travel freedom. I first saw this movie when I was 17 years old and I was actually on a three-week backpacking trip throughout Europe with two of my best high school friends and we had gotten tickets for the Eurorail where you can literally just hop on and take the train between European countries anytime you want. And it was a fantastic trip. But on one of the last nights, we were so tired from our three weeks of constant just traveling and adventure and train rides and hostels and lugging our big backpacks that we decided to stay in the hostel one night and watch this movie on one of our iPads. And that movie is called Before Sunrise. It is so magical. And if you want just a short glimpse into what I find so inspiring about travel, but also about spirituality, about deep connection with others. I mean, everything I love is in this movie. Just a short synopsis. It is about this young American guy on a train going from somewhere to Paris (laughs) and He was going to get off in Vienna because he has a flight the next day. And on this train, he meets this young, beautiful French girl. You know, they start up a conversation. They really hit it off. And he spontaneously says to her, hey, I'm getting off in Vienna. I know you're going further on to Paris, but I really want to spend more time with you. How do you feel about getting off the train and spending a night with me in Vienna? I'm flying out early next morning. I don't even have money for a hotel tonight, so I was just going to walk around all night. Do you want to join me? And she said, yes. And so it's about their night together. There's romance. There's just deep conversations. They're just walking through these old European streets. Everything I love is in this movie and it's actually a three-part series, a three-movie three series. So if you need a little bit of that international travel inspiration, then definitely check out that movie. Now I will get to the final update that actually impacts you as a listener. So when we go to Thailand, which I mentioned is in less than a week, I am actually going to take a much needed break from the podcast. So that means that this episode that you're listening to is the last episode for the foreseeable future. 
No, I'm not getting rid of this podcast. No, I'm not saying I'm never coming back. I feel in my bones like I absolutely will. I just don't know when that will be. I don't know if it'll be one month from now, three months from now, six months from now. All I know is that my cup is currently very empty and I need to fill up my cup. But also, I really want to just enjoy Thailand with my husband. We have been talking about this and planning for this for just about a year at this point. And even though I've been so excited to share about Thailand on the podcast, I have just burned myself to the ground a little bit as I often do as a fire sign. And at this point, I just desperately need a break. So there are just a few things that I want to highlight on this because I think this is a really important conversation that goes far beyond me as a person taking this one break. This is a message that I want to share with you all. So first of all, I'll share that as I was saying earlier, that that planet of discipline, responsibility, hard work, Saturn is really prominent in my chart. So for me, what feels natural, what almost feels not easy, but just inherent to who I am is working really hard, pushing nonstop and not stopping. (laughs) And that has led me to burnout more times in my life than I can even count on one hand or two hands or two hands and two feet. And so I am finding that I finally need to walk my talk. And my talk is what I always say on this podcast, which is take a break, enjoy life, stop to smell the roses. You know, the work will still be there tomorrow. Go out, smell the fresh air, enjoy time with friends, family, enjoy freedom, all of that stuff that I believe in my heart, soul, every cell of my body. But when it comes to myself, sometimes it's hard for me to actually stop and do that. Yes, I'm a very joyful person and I love to play and I do play and I do enjoy, but I also... I'm an extremely hard worker and I am actually using this to challenge myself. This is the first step of my personal growth going abroad to Thailand. The first step for me is actually pausing the podcast because it it would be natural for me to just keep going. But as I said, I'm really burned out and I really want to just enjoy some time in Thailand with Cal. I want to explore my new home for goodness sake. I mean, Cal and I have never even been to Thailand. (laughs) So I desperately both need and want this break. But beyond that, I just wanted to talk for a second about how whenever you embark on a new venture, whether it's a new job or even a new relationship or, I don't know, a new hobby. Anytime you start anything, there is the initial excitement, the drive, the passion. You keep going, going, going. And at a certain point, I think it's really important to stand back, take a pause, and look at whatever you've started and ask yourself how you feel about it and how you feel about the direction it's going in. For me, I have... Already, I don't even know if you would notice, but I feel like I have already pivoted within this podcast quite a few times and there are quite a few more changes I would like to implement because of course we learn as we grow. But also I'm at a point right now where I am stepping back and I'm asking myself, okay, I'm extremely burned out. Right now I have a little bit less excitement around the podcast than I once did just because I'm so burned out. And so the question becomes, and you can do this in your own life, the question becomes, am I out of alignment with this thing that I've started or do I simply need a break? Because sometimes when you're burned out, it's hard to tell. When you're burned out, whether it's at your job or with something else, your initial reaction is, I just want to stop. But you need to ask yourself, 
okay, do I want to stop because this is actually out of alignment? It's not right for me anymore. Or do I just need to rest? And for me with this podcast, I think this podcast is still beautifully in alignment with my messages I want to share with the world and with my path, with my purpose. But I really freaking need a break and that's okay. So I want you to be able to ask that in your own life as well. Whenever you start to feel burnt out or less excited about what you're doing, just ask yourself, is this out of alignment or do I just need a break? So that has been a game changer for me. And it took a while for me to accept that I was going to pause the podcast when I go to Thailand. Cal had first brought up the idea months ago. And for a while I was saying, absolutely not. You know, you can't just stop and then resume. I mean, I have listeners to tend to. I don't want people to just forget about the podcast. And then after a couple more months, I realized this is not about what I think I should do. This is about what I desperately need. So always ask yourself, am I shooting on myself and what do I need? So all of these things that I talk about all the time, I feel like it's just coming full circle and I'm trying to challenge myself in this way. And I've even mentioned a quote on the podcast before in association with my eating disorder, but I feel like it's really important here too. The quote is, for some, not eating the cookie is progress and for others, eating the cookie is progress. So for me, for example, as an individual, because I so strongly know my relationship with discipline and hard work and responsibility and pushing through, and I know that I can do that quite inherently, then I'm actually going to challenge myself. It might even sound silly. It's like, why would you not want to work hard? But I want to challenge myself to actually rest, to actually go easy on myself, to actually take a break, take a pause. And so I'm constantly asking myself in life, where lies more growth for me? Where lies the challenge? For some, it would be not eating the cookie, aka keep working on the podcast, keep pushing out content, whatever it might be for you. For me, it's always been that progress is eating the cookie. Progress is taking the break, Progress is saying, you know what? Yes, I will go on that adventure. I'll actually save the work for tomorrow because it's in my nature to do the opposite, to do the work now and say, I'll play later. So of course, there's a beautiful balance we can find in life, but I want you to constantly ask yourself, where lies the growth? Where lies the challenge? If you are always the one to work first, play later, maybe you challenge yourself. Maybe just for one day, you play a little and then work. Whatever the challenge is for you, just play around with that and try to expand your comfort zone edges a little bit. Try to grow. Try to just expand yourself as a person. Try to up level a little bit. So that's a little bit about the pause and why I'm doing it. But to really round out that part of the conversation, I want to read you one of my favorite stories ever. It's called the Mexican Fisherman Story. Some of you may have heard it, but this story is one that I heard a few years ago and I've never forgotten it. Every time I read it, I feel like it almost brings me close to tears because so much is said in such a short story. And you'll understand very quickly as I read the story why I'm sharing it now, but let this be my message to you for today. So here is the story, the Mexican fisherman story. An American investment banker was at the pier of a small coastal Mexican village late one morning when a small boat docked. Inside the small boat was just one fisherman who had already caught several large fish. The American complimented the fisherman on the fish and asked how long it took to catch them. The fisherman replied, only a little while. The American then asked, well, why didn't he stay out longer and catch more fish? The Mexican said that he had caught plenty enough to provide for his family's needs for quite a while 
and even to give some fish away to others in the village. The American then asked, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman said, I sleep late, play with my children, take siestas with my wife, and stroll into the village where I sip wine and play guitar with mis amigos. I have a full and busy life. The American scoffed. Well, I'm an experienced businessman and I can help you, he said. You should spend more time fishing and with the proceeds, buy a bigger boat. With the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could have a whole fleet of fishing boats. Open up your own cannery and control all of the distribution, he said. Of course, you would need to leave this small coastal fishing village and move to a bigger city to run the expanding enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asked, but how long will that all take? To which the American replied, uh, 15 or 20 years or so. But what then? asked the Mexican. The American laughed and said, that's the best part. When the time is right, you would sell your company and become very rich. You could make millions. Millions? Then what? said the Mexican. The American said, then you could retire, move to a small coastal fishing village where you could sleep late, play with your kids, take siestas with your wife, and stroll to the village where you could sip wine and play guitar with your amigos. I already do that, said the Mexican fisherman. End story. So I love that story, and you can probably see why. I feel like it perfectly illustrates that especially in the Western world, in America, it's constantly a question of, How can you work harder? How can you go faster and farther? How can you build bigger? How can you expand? How can you scale? How can you make more money? How can you work more? Everything is about work and security. And those are not inherently bad. But when that becomes all consuming, like we are just here to work and never to enjoy. We are just here to make more, to have more security, and to never actually use that security to enjoy the present moment. That's when I have an issue with the philosophy. And so in this story, it really shows the difference between this kind of American philosophy of, well, hey, you can actually work more, make a ton of money until you get to a point where you don't have to work at all. So it's craving not only this fame, this success, these millions of dollars, but it's also craving retirement. Whereas this Mexican says, well, I'm currently enjoying the present moment almost in a semi-retired state. I make what I need to to survive and I enjoy my days. I enjoy my life. So that story just gives me goosebumps every time. And I hope that it sparked something in you just to reassess your own values. And in what ways are you acting purely in alignment with what society has told you is right or with what your family has told you is right? And where are you out of alignment with your own personal values? When you actually step back and ask yourself, is everything in my life in alignment with who I am and what I want? And if any of it isn't, you can actually make the change. That's the magical thing about being an individual in this world, that we have free will and free choice. So for me, as you well know, as a listener of this podcast, I'm constantly asking myself the big questions. And the good thing is that we can also change and evolve. So if something feels aligned now, it might not a year from now. Or if something felt aligned a year ago, it might not now. And so constantly ask yourself, where are you in alignment? Where are you out of alignment with your own personal values? And then how can you make changes to get yourself back on your own aligned path? I also wanted to read one other quick quote from one of my favorite books that helped to inspire this trip for Cal and I, or not trip, this move, this adventure, this expedition, I don't even know what to call it, but that book is Vagabonding, An Uncommon Guide to the Art of Long-Term World Travel by Rolf Potts. It is such an incredible 
fuck. Oh my gosh. Between vagabonding and the movie Before Sunrise that I mentioned, you will want to be hopping on a plane as soon as you possibly can. (laughs) But in this book, he shares a lot of quotes from other authors, travelers, etc. And there's a quote that I absolutely love from Tim Ferriss, who of course is an author, podcaster, motivational speaker. He wrote The 4-Hour Work Week. He's written many other books as well. And I really appreciate his work. I don't agree with all of it, but I really appreciate it. And he has this quote where he's talking about people are essentially afraid to work less hard. People are afraid to give themselves space in life because especially those of us that do work hard or at least have been raised in a society where we're supposed to work long hours all the time on a very tight schedule, we don't actually know how to live life without that or outside of that. And so this is his quote. He said, It soon becomes clear that having less work is easy. It's filling the void with more life that is hard. Finding excitement, as it turns out, takes more thought than simple workaholism. But don't fret, that's where all the rewards are. So I love that quote because even in my own life and with Cal, we are both very high achievers and we both work really hard and so we have found on numerous occasions let's say I don't know it's a Wednesday and we've actually gotten a lot of work done we've been really productive and around 3 30 or 4 we're kind of at a good stopping point but to us that's not when you end the work day You end the workday around 5 or 5.30 or something like that. And so there have been so many times where we're actually uncomfortable with having space in our lives. We don't know what to do with the space. And I don't think we're alone in that. I think we've kind of been raised in a society where we actually don't know how to fill our life with more life. If anything... We think, hey, we have a little extra time. Maybe I'll watch a Netflix show. And I'm not against that. Maybe that's exactly what you need in that moment. But if you weren't watching a Netflix show or scrolling on your phone, how could you actually expand that time by filling it with more life rather than just numbing yourself or stimulating yourself with a movie or social media? And it really is an incredible technique for growth and finding your personal edge. When Cal and I travel, we really try to just expand ourselves and see where we can push a little bit further than we're comfortable with. And I really mean that in this exact situation. That when I read Tim Ferriss's quote, I thought, wow, I feel very seen and very heard, very understood. And when Cal and I go to Thailand in these weeks or a couple of months where we're taking a bit of a break from the podcast and social media and all of that, I don't want us to just kick our feet up on a hammock and drink pina coladas. That's not really our style. That might work for a day or two when we're, you know, recovering from jet lag. But I really want it to be a practice of How can we fill this time, this space, this void with more life? So let that be a question for you as well. Are you uncomfortable with empty time? If you had a fully free day, let's say especially you were alone. It was a Saturday. It was a fully free day. Would you even know what to do with yourself? I think for many of us, the answer is no. I've actually been speaking recently with one of my best friends who has found herself having a little bit more free time on her hands because things at work have been slow. And on our conversations, on our phone calls, I love that we always talk about the fact that it is sometimes uncomfortable for her. She really doesn't know what to do with those days, what to do with herself, how to fill that time. And so the fact that I see that from one of my dear friends who is all about play and fun and you wouldn't think that she would struggle with that it's true of all of us if we've been raised in this society if we have been 
awake and absorbing the values of this world we live in, then it's probably a challenge for all of us. So anyway, those are some stories, some questions, some messages, some quotes. As always, I like there to be takeaways from these episodes. And so I just wanted to round out with what you can do while I'm away. (laughs) So first things first, you can catch up on all of the episodes that you haven't listened to yet. So if you had some weeks where you were busy and you didn't get to tune in, definitely catch up on those. Or you can even re-watch, re-listen to some of your favorite episodes. Feel free or please do follow, subscribe to all of my social media channels where I will be actually sharing updates in real time. So make sure that you're definitely subscribed or following this podcast wherever you find your podcast, whether it's Spotify, the podcast app. Also, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is just Devin Rochelle Hine, because I might end up throwing some Thailand vlogs of Cal and I on there. I'm not quite sure yet. We're just going to take it one day at a time. And then, of course, my Instagram is where I am most active on a day to day basis. So if you want to follow along with some of the Thailand adventures, definitely follow my personal Instagram, which is just Devin underscore Rochelle underscore. And the podcast Instagram where I will be posting all the updates about the podcast is just It's All Magic Podcast. So that's a lot of different links and things. But last thing I'll say on that note is that in the show notes, the description of this episode where you see the little box of notes, I will have a link where you can drop your email address if you'd like to be added to my newsletter list. I am just going to be kickstarting a newsletter so that I can share updates. And then also when I come back with the podcast, I think things will be a little bit different. And so I want the newsletter to be there to bring you a little bit more into my orbit of my offerings and how I can actually serve you on a one-to-one scale or even a one-to-many scale if you would like some speaking engagements from me. So for example, when I come back with the podcast, at that point, I will probably be opening my doors to doing astrology readings with all of you all. So I've already been practicing a lot. I have some readings in the books, but right now I'm just taking it slow because of course I'm I'm winding down and am in the midst of flying to Thailand, spreading my wings and being free. But when I come back to all of this, you can definitely expect some astrology offerings, perhaps some breath work, definitely opening my doors to more speaking engagements, workshops, etc. So definitely drop your email address in the link below if you'd like to be part of my newsletter where I can just share some life updates, pictures, offerings, all the good stuff. And with that said, that's all the logistics. I want to just round out here by saying again, thank you so much for being with me. I honestly could not have done this journey for these 10 months every single week with not a single week rest, might I add, if it were not for all of you sweet souls. And for those of you who have reached out, who have rated and reviewed, thank you so much. It truly means the world to me. And I'll actually say that would be my last ask if you could please rate and review this podcast if you haven't already. It helps the algorithm massively. Right now, as it stands, I'm at 31 reviews on Apple Podcasts and I believe 20 reviews on Spotify. If we could kick those both up to 35 or 40, that would be so amazing so that when I come back, Perhaps we have even more listeners joining us. Okay, my friends, remember to enjoy the small things in life. Remember to be the Mexican fisherman in the story and live in the present moment. Find joy in the everyday. Remember to take risks. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If it feels scary, but it feels right in your gut, then it's a yes Go for it and do it now, because if not now, when? And most importantly, remember that it really is all magic after all. Mm, Oh, that makes me kind of (laughs) sad, but I will be back. I'm not gone forever. This is just a 
farewell for now. I'm just taking a break, but I love you. I adore you. I see you. I hear you. I thank you for being here. And until next time, my friends, goodbye for now. Bye.